Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Star Wars Out of the Box with me, Dill Streep. Each episode I'm going to look at an old Star Wars item of mine. It could be a toy, a book, a random piece of memorabilia. I'll review the item, discuss its place within Star Wars and what it means to me. For today's episode I decided to show you all the various versions of Star Wars that I own on physical media. I feel like it might give a good sense of why I'm so invested in the franchise. Because I'm literally so invested in the franchise. Let's take a look. Yes, this is all the Star Wars physical media that I own, or should I say visual physical media. Obviously those book and tape sets that I reviewed in the past should count too. We'll start with the Star Wars trilogy. Classic shiny silver and black box. Pretty sure everyone had this one. So you can take off the outer sleeve, reveal another sleeve. It's got an X-Wing chasing down a TIE fighter long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Other side, the Falcon and some TIE Fighters. And then four DVDs. New Hope, The Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, and bonus material. And if for some reason you haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend Empire of Dreams, which is a feature length documentary on this disc. It's super interesting throughout, but I think the most fascinating part for me was learning how Ben Burt created a lot of the sounds that we're so familiar with now from scratch. George introduced the idea of what he called an organic soundtrack. Chewbacca might be made up from recordings of dogs or maybe even bears. In addition, I recorded some lions and tigers and even some walruses. I would take the recordings and edit the best pieces. You know, the bear might make a sound that sounded angry. Or they might make a sound that was cute. The script uh, only said that R2 made a sound or maybe R2 beeped. I had a small electronic synthesizer and I did some patches with it and made up some electronic sounds. And eventually, a few experiments led to the combination of using my voice doing baby talk, beeps and boops, with the electronic synthesizer. So R2 is sort of 50% machine and 50% organic. The breathing for Vader was recorded by putting a little tiny microphone down inside a regulator on a scuba tank. And I breathed through the mask itself and it breathed in and out. And out of that came the, the various, you know, paces of Vader breathing. And outside of the original three movies, which need no further praise from me at this point, these all included feature commentaries as well, which a couple of my friends and I watched together about 15 years ago. Next up is what came after. Episodes 1, 2, and 3. And again, I think a lot of people would have bought these as individuals because they never came out as a set together the way that the original trilogy did. They certainly aren't my favorite of the saga, but the discs do include plenty of deleted scenes, documentaries, and commentaries. But then Blu-ray came along and Star Wars The Complete Saga was released. This was very exciting to get my hands on. And again, we can take off the outer case, open it up. This time we've got Guide to the Galaxy, Star Wars The Complete Saga. It's always fun to see how they refer to this as the complete saga, knowing what we know now. The originals, the prequels, the sequels, the sidequels, the side stories, the animated shows, the live action TV shows, the cartoon shows, and whatever that thing is with Maggie Simpson. So this has artist renderings of production stills and moments from episode 1 through 6. As well as for some reason Boba Fett riding the boga from episode 3. Now you're crossing trilogies. Although I'm sure it's some piece of concept art actually that was drawn in the 80s. A couple more production stills, and then a list of everything that's on the discs. The sleeve that this book fits into has an artist rendering of loads of the characters, most of which look pretty good. Except for Princess Leia. I don't really know what they've done to her face there. And then you can flip through the various discs like a book. A disc for each film and then three discs worth of bonus material. Very cool. And much like the original Trilogy DVD box set, when more films came out, I had the same thing with the Blu-rays. Suddenly the complete saga wasn't so complete anymore, and I had to pick up The Force Awakens, Rogue One, Solo, The Last Jedi. But sadly I have to admit that I do not have the Blu-ray for The Rise of Skywalker, so my set is actually incomplete. And I blame the fans who don't buy physical media anymore, because the fewer people who want to buy the discs, the more expensive they become for the rest of us. A quick aside, I also have the Family Guy Laugh It Up Fuzzball trilogy and the Robot Chicken Star Wars parody trilogy. If you haven't seen these, I highly recommend seeking them out. They're really fun. 
A friend and fellow Star Wars nerd put it very well when he said that the Family Guy trilogy makes Family Guy jokes on a Star Wars background, while the Robot Chicken trilogy does Star Wars jokes on a Robot Chicken background. And I agree, the jokes are definitely aimed more at somebody with a deeper understanding of Star Wars in these than they are in these, but both are really fun nonetheless. And then for a journey back in time, I have this box of VHSs that I've always felt might be worth something, but I've never really looked it up. And these panels open out on the side and you can take out three individual VHSs. Just trying to find a date on here. This does say 1977. I think these might actually be quite valuable. It was second hand when I bought it and you can see that the little blue tape has been torn. Ah, once you get into the tape, copyright 1992. Still, that's five years before the year of the special edition. Sadly, if you have watched my book and tape reviews, you'll see that I found it very difficult to find a cassette player, and I imagine it'll be even harder to find a working VHS player. But I'll look into it for a future episode. 92. See underneath. That says 77, 80, and 83. Yeah, but as soon as they're writing 92 on there. There's no way back in 83 they would have written copyright 1992 on it. There's a good chance that these are altered or special edition in some way. The dream would be to put in A New Hope. I mean, this doesn't even say A New Hope anywhere on it, just Star Wars. That's promising. I'm really going to have to do a follow-up episode on these. But the dream would be that you put Star Wars in, and when you get to the scene in the hangar bay with the Millennium Falcon, there's a human Jabba walking around. That would be fun. If you do have any info on this box set, please leave it in the comments below. I'd be very interested to hear more about it. And I also have one of these home release videos, also just of Star Wars, but it totally says proudly at the bottom, digitally remastered for superior sound and picture quality. I think you let the fans be the judge of that. Copyright 95. Man, so they were putting these things out every couple years in the 90s, it seems. This one actually isn't mine. I'm holding on to it for a friend. And this will actually be a good test to see whether they're watching these videos. If this is yours, comment below. But then, I've saved the best till last. Although that's debatable because this VHS box set might actually be a gold mine, but I just don't know. What I do know is that in 2006, they released a version of the original trilogy that looked pretty much exactly the same as the version we got in this box over here. However, on the second disc, you can see original theatrical 1977 version of Star Wars, original theatrical 1980 Empire Strikes Back, original theatrical 1983 Return of the Jedi. This must have happened almost as a mistake and then immediately undone because never before nor since have they released those original versions on disc. So obviously these are super hard to find. And I was actually on holiday last year when my friend Dwayne texted me a picture of them at a secondhand store saying these are going for really cheap. Do you want them? I said, uh, yes sir, yes I would like those. I've been searching for them for about 10 years since I heard about them. And until they're released on Blu-ray or on Disney Plus or the next company that buys Star Wars, these discs are the only way that I watch the original trilogy. So that's all the Star Wars physical media that I own. Some might call it overkill, but I hope the little story I told you today going through them all justifies their existence on my shelf. Thank you so much for watching another episode of Star Wars Out of the Box with me, Dil Streep. If you enjoyed it, please give it a look subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications. Until next time, goodbye. And then these panels open up with three individual cassettes inside. Oh, didn't think they'd come out the bottom. Uh, I'm gonna break it.